Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life, produced in association with Academia University TV, a project of Academia University, open and free education and knowledge. Academia University TV and Hawaii Tea House TV are a part of Cyborg Alpha TV Network. Experimental TV. Well, I'm trying to keep up with my vlogging and uh, the particularly the posting. I'm about uh, 20 days out from uh, the uh, current date, uh, so I just finished editing the vlog for the for December 5th, 20, December 5th uh, to the 7th, and it is 21 hours and four minutes into the. 27th day of uh, December. Uh, people are still in their Christmas hangover. Uh, there's also a snowstorm outside that has kind of stalled everything. I like <laughs> snow day. I like snow days and I like sick days to some degree because things slow down to an absolute halt. And that means you can take a more leisurely day around to do just about, well, I guess things done. This is what I was talking about before about the bare minimum. The efficiency model that you choose or choose to work on will determine how much energy you need to have in order to get something done. On the bare minimum days where you just want to coast, you don't really want to do anything, just simply you're already in motion, you don't need to push any harder, so you just coast. And this is sort of what Carly's into now. When men think she's coasting, she's she's already put the effort in. She doesn't need to really, in, in many ways, do much more than the bare minimum until she decides what she, where she wants to go next. And so, in their coasting percent, uh, mode, you have motion. You're not motionless. I'm not doing. Not 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 you're not, not you're not going anywhere. It's just you're not putting in the effort that you typically would be if you wanted to push your head to something new. Uh, and so what happens now is Carly's got, a, got a, probably a couple of years to decide where she wants to go next. Uh, and so she, all she has to do for the next few, next couple of years, we'll see what happens. She might decide to do more or, or, or you know, whatever her decisions are over the, as she finishes her senior year, that's really going to determine uh, where she's going to end up heading out. Uh, what she's going to do with her life, and uh, what will happen to YouTube in terms of her uh, existence on YouTube. And that will, in many cases, determine what happens to our family nest, because they're kind of, she, uh, our family nest kind of, in many ways, depends on Carly. Candy's a nice person. I don't say she's not a nice person, but a large chunk of her views, the majority of her views, come from Carly. When Carly's in the video, the views go up. When she's not in the video, she's just uh, car, uh, Candy and uh, her husband Ken, or even just Candy by herself. The views go down. You can sort of this is consistent. Uh, so Carly is key to our family nest, and this is the way it is. When I was watching the Christmas vlogs, uh, they were having Christmas. It was, it was, uh, and this is true for uh, Ash and, and, and Chase. Ash is the primary vlogger. She's the one pushing the vlog for it. And it's typically because girls tend to be more social. So uh, when they had the uh, Christmas uh, video, and they were doing their Christmas day to get, or the preparations for Christmas, uh, they were making cookies. It was the three It was the three girls together. It was uh, Asha, Carly, and Candy. And they had a conversation. Guys, when they were particularly in their thing, when they're watching football or playing a video game or something like that. There's no conversation. There really isn't a conversation between guys. So you sit there basically watching one person play. It's like, it's like watching, it's like watching, in many cases, uh, Twitch uh, on a channel where there's typically guys and there's not much of a discussion going on. It's just simply comments here and there and that's about it. Uh, with uh, with uh, girls, with women, there are t there's typically a more social environment, there's more of a conversation going on, even, even it doesn't have to, be, have to be in depth, but there is a conversation that's uh, sort of going on that they're aware of, and you sort of uh, 
you get as an audience that you sort of participate in this uh, more than you would with guys. And this is why a, a girl's channel is typically more popular than a guy's channel is. Uh, and with vloggers, and this is the exception would be Yowie vlogs, most of your vloggers are women because it's the conversation uh, and it's their perspective on how... This is why a haul is important. Showing what you got for, for a gift. Showing what you got when you went shopping. Showing off the different clothing. And all this little bit. These are things that, that, that women, that girls like to do. And so if it's their, it's their vlog, then you're, this is what you're going to see. And so in this case here, this is where Candy's channel, Our Family Nest, really thrives. Without the other girls there. Without... Asha or Carly, there's no conversation. The conversa conversation dies off. And it becomes flat. And you see this with the, with, the, with the audience, with the views, the number of people who viewed the video. You look at the views rather than the subscription. The number of people who viewed a particular video and how popular that video is in terms of, uh, of the views often determines which direction is the best direction. And the best direction seems to be a combination of either Carl, uh, of Candy and Asha, that's the, not, not going to be the uh, the daughter-in-law, uh, eventually. Their boyfriend, Chase and Asha, both boyfriend and girlfriend, but they're living together, they have the same house, and one would assume that they're moving in that direction. And the other is uh, Carly and Candy. That's how our family nest began. It was Carly and Candy. And that seems to be uh, the sort of the main combination. Of course, Char Carly has her own channel. So as long as she does, it, it remains consistently, even with Our Family Nest, uh, she's doing okay. The issue in, on Allie's side, now that she's become a princess, there's almost no communication from her. I don't see her. I've checked her, her, her uh, Instagram. There's no, not much there. Uh, she hasn't vlogged in months on her uh, on her channel, she appears occasionally, but br for brief moments, uh, in the Yami Vlogs channel. And the Yami Vlog channel is kind of an exception, a lot, a lot like Clintus. Clintus was an exception to the rule, and same thing with Yami Vlogs. The Yami Vlogs and Clintus TV, and Clintus TV is more or less gone now. Uh, he's gone off to Twitch, and that's where he seems to be most of it, his effort is there. Uh, but the, those two vlogs that, that I'm mentioning now, those were guys who were vlogging. They had good content. They had good conversation. They really kept the the, the focus was in the family dynamic. They were able to keep the videos co cohesive enough that they were able to show the family dynamic. Uh, and so this is sort of the case here. But Yahweh Vlogs really wasn't dependent on, on Ali as much. Uh, she was popular in the videos. This is how she was able to set up her own channel. But as she got older and sort of heading off towards Disney, the, becoming a Disney princess, her interest in YouTube dropped off and she's now focused almost solely on uh, being the Disney princess now. And that's, she got in, she was able to get a part, one of the, become one of the cast members in California, so she's heading off to California. But there's been no mention of it and she appears briefly in, in the vlogs. Uh, if she had appeared in more of the vlogs, I think that would be a better thing. But, you know, everyone has to make their own choices. Everyone has to sort of be where they want to be in life. Even if later on they sort of regret that and say, I should have done this. Uh, but sometimes you have to make that decision. Sometimes you have to make the decision to go off in one direction or the other and sort of say, okay, well, if I miss out, then I miss out. Uh, and this is sort of what, 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 what uh, Ali is doing. And it said. I wish her luck in being a Disney president. Sort of congratulate, congratulations. I think that would be a, it was a great Christmas gift that she was able that occurred around the Christmas time, Christmas time. It is a great gift for uh, Christmas gift for her. Uh, let's say from Santa uh, uh, to become a Disney princess. So, anyways, uh, I say if you believe in miracles, then around Christmas time, this was her. Uh, Allie's Christmas miracle would have been uh, 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 becoming a Disney princess. Because before then, the rules were blocked. And they were telling her six, telling her six months out that maybe maybe she'd be able to apply again. 
But she was determined, and in December she was. It was announced, and she found out that uh, she became a, She was accepted as a, as a Disney princess. So this is her Christmas miracle. And like so, congratulations, Allie, and, and Merry Christmas, and Merry Christmas to everyone who's celebrating on the twenty fifth. Uh, there is still more Christmas to come for me. This is why the the vlogmas will continue. Uh, we celebrate on uh, the Eastern uh, Christmas, uh, which is on the seventh, and we continue because we still have the twelve days of Christmas. Uh, and this is not the Advent. This is uh, something afterwards. The twelve days of Christmas takes you to the baptism of Christ. Uh, what they call Forta, or the Illumination. And that ends on basically the 20th, 19th and 20th. Uh, and then I add in uh, a couple more, a couple of them, about a week or so, to get us to, get us to February 1st, because we have the Christmas hangover. <laughs> so, uh, and then we have just a month left till, until uh, we start up the uh, season for, for Passover, for or Pascha, or what, the, what people call Easter. Uh, so anyways, I think I'm going to leave that here for now. It's uh, been enough time, and I'm going to go back to uh, my meditation and uh, continue on with, with the uh, YouTube stroll. Uh, as I'm going to be going to Keshley Jade. I just left for left uh, the Leroy's, and so I'm heading over to Keshley Jade's right, Jade's right now. Akatima University. Go beyond standard knowledge. Vlogging the the transitions is a uh, little difficult, difficult thing to do. The tendency is to put it off and vlog at the end of tra end of the transition. But uh, uh, and this is one. This is a pit stop. And uh, but what happens? I know myself. If I get to the end of the pit stop and I'm too tired, I'm not gonna vlog. So uh, better vlog beforehand. We're leaving the uh, YouTube stroll. We left at. Uh, at uh, uh, Family Forever and Sister Forever, and we're heading over to Kim Possible now. This is going on to our cartoons. So, yay for routine because uh, basically that's all I've got <laughs> in terms of my uh, something stable or, or or routine to cling to. Uh, everything else is kind of up in the air. I do have a direction now for February in terms of where I'm going to for the research, I just still have to do some work on the notebook in order to really organize my notes better and uh, get a better sense for where we are, and then once that's done, probably, uh, let's see, I would say uh, by January 10th, we'll be back to doing the observation vlog, so there's going to be a bit of a pause in the observation vlog. Right now, I'm just doing a pause because... Uh, not a lot of people are watching. It's, they're off on the holidays. There's, you know, it was just Christmas. There's New Year's. Uh, and then there's a second Christmas. Uh, uh, so things won't be back to normal until basically January 10th. So uh, I'm going to pause the uh, observation and the uh, no seats vlog. Those are the verbal essays until then. Uh, and then continue up from there on out. So, But I am working on, on my notes there. I'm organizing things better in terms of some of the new areas that we've sort of touched on. And this is what happens. Once you go over your notes and, and do these verbal essays, you try to bring some coherence to the notes you took. Uh, you come up with new ideas and new questions pop up as to things you want to research and sort of look better into. Uh, and this is sort of certainly the case here. And this is what I'm saying is you can't do a one-off thing and make a, a judgment on the, on the one thing you've done because even when you go back and do the research... Uh, it, well, I should say, when you go back and look at your notes, because you, you've already done the research, you're taking your notes. Uh, when you go through your notes, you start to organize them. And this is what, the, what what a base or or a rough draft essay is. It's an attempt to sort of look at your notes and see what do you have, what do you actually have in your notes. And then as you do this, there are questions that pop up and things you may have missed or you want to answer further. And this opens the door, this opens, this sets the avenue for the path that you're going to go down next uh, when you uh, go back and start doing your research. You, okay, let's look at this particular area here. This is what I was talking about in the the vlog I just, uh, last, uh, the long vlog before, I was talking about men's fashions. And looking back at the history of fashion, how fashion really, in many ways, typifies 
the attitude of society at that particular point in time. In other words, and, and I'm saying about society, society was never everybody included. Typically, society was, were typically those who were con deemed to be worthy of society. In other words, you hear Lionel talk about the social, social credit. Social credit isn't anything new. It's actually something old. It's part of the imperial system. And as I go back into, uh, well, not go back, but uh, take a look at Aang, the last avatar. Look at the city of Ba Sing Se. Look at what, what's going on there, how it's structured. And you'll begin to understand a lot of what's going on today and how society is actually structured. Uh, and why the uh, sort of the bureaucracy has the control it has that they say, oh, there's the elites. Well, the elites really don't have the levers of control. It's actually the bureaucracy that does. And every once in a while, the bureaucracy gets out of control. And uh, this is what happened in Spain in, 19, in, in 15, the 1500s, just around the time that Columbus sailed for America, is there was a massive revolution going on in Spain. And so the... the, the, the uh, the bureaucrats had gotten out of control, and the royal powers that be uh, sent their, their their people out to uh, to uh, get rid of the um, the troublemakers, if you will. And that's what led to the Spanish Inquisition. It lasted for about two hundred years. At the end of the two hundred years, or about seventeen hundred AD, this is when, if you pardon the pardon the phrases, the wheel came the wheels came off the bus. Oh. And it was the, really the end of the, Va the Vatican's power. The power, Vatic Vatican's power really sort of diminished in Europe because uh, England was no longer part of the uh, part of the uh, well, the European sphere, which is the, the Vatican sphere. Uh, before it was Germanic, it was actually Vatican, uh, and it was initially French. Then it passed to uh, the uh, to the Austro-Hungarian area, this is where you have Prague, Czechoslovakia, being the core of uh, of the initial uh, Holy Roman Empire. Then it shifted to Spain, and from Spain, it ended up being taken over by England, in terms of your global sphere. And this is how you end up you how you end up with slavery in in, in North America. Is the tip was initially initiated by the Spanish but then taken over by the English. And it wasn't done so in a formal manner, it was done so in an informal manner. And all your slaves, the, 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 purchased, the purchased goods that they were picking up from, from, uh, from Africa, and this is particularly North Africa, they sailed from North Africa, so the ports in the, well, the trading houses were North African. And the processing points, uh, because this is where the trade winds went, were, was to the Caribbean islands. And so all your all your different ports, you know, whether it's Aruba uh, or Jamaica, Cuba, or what have you, these are all pirate ports, and they're all part of where you bring your your, your goods that were stolen or, or otherwise. And this is where you bought, bought and sold. This was the, um, if you will, the commodities market, and they kept the uh, the slaves they wanted to do for sugar, and then they sent the rest to uh, the southern part of the United States uh, to uh, work on the cotton plantation. So, but anyway, all this stuff is an, is an interesting part of history, but again, it doesn't properly pop up in the history textbooks. You have to go out and find a path that leads you to all this particular information. And it's not necessarily hidden, it just, it's just not conveniently placed for a person to find it. But this again. But this is one, once again what makes a scavenger hunt interesting is that you, things aren't always where you seem 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 to think that they are, and this is kind of what happens with the Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci. Why are people going crazy over the Da Vinci Code? Because it's a scavenger hunt. There are clues to find real treasure, and there are still treasure hunters out there today. There are scavengers out there looking for pirate gold. This the 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 the, the, the race is still on the fine. Uh, the lost pirate gold that was supposedly supposed to be in the the Caribbean someplace, and the the, so the the fabled Treasure Island, and it turned out if you look do, do a little bit historical, a little bit of digging, you'll find that the author of uh, of, of 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 Treasure Island uh, had been sailing with pirates. He had been in contact with the pirates, 
So these stories aren't necessarily stories in the sense that uh, they're completely fictional. In many cases, they're based on reality. Figure that out, and then now you've got a real treasure hunt, a real form of interesting history that never makes it into any textbook. Because, you know, you don't want people, you know, going out, everyone out, going out and looking for that gold. You just want to leave it to a few people. Of course, once the people find it, they make the announcement, and the government comes up, well, you know, that's uh, actually our property here. This You're on government territory, and the government takes, the cut, takes it for themselves. And it's one game, uh, one game after another. Everyone's playing a, a one type of game or another, and you can figure this out in history. And this, this is why history is important, and this is why the research is important. And you have to do more than one perusal. You just don't go over something once, like, ah, that's easy, he's rambling. You have to go dig into history. Once you do that and take your notes, when you go back into your notes, you have to do these verbal essays to understand what you've actually collected. That's how you understand what you collected. And then that verbal essay sends you out into other paths to make sure that you understand what you understood. Anyways, uh, I'm going to leave this here for now. I've got uh, some chips. Rice Krispie Crackers. Rice Krispie Square, Squares, I should say. And I got a nice little tea drink here. Uh, and I put some, uh, with my new juicer, I do a sort of a, a, a strawberry smoothie, and it's got a very nice flavor to it. So, anyways, uh, this is it for the pit stop. Produced in association with Academia University TV, a project of Academia University, open and free education and knowledge. Academia University TV and Hawaii Tea House TV are a part of Cyborg Alpha TV Network, Experimental TV. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween and Middle School for Life.